Welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Brandy. And I'm Alan. And today we are going to do a salute to Cinematic Sidekicks. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes you get the hero of your story and he just needs someone to play off of a little bit. They don't get as much of the glory, but they're usually doing more of the work. <laughs> exactly. So. They, they're they not in the spotlight, but they're in the back kind of making sure the good guys like all taken care of. And you know, they're giving you the comic relief. They're just, you know, they're bringing things together and we want to highlight some of our favorites today. Yes. All right. So I'll start with my number five. Okay. Uh... From a comedy that I've uh, championed a couple of times as being something that really is is quite quality and holds up very well, I'm going with Garth of yeah. Wayne's World. <laughs> I, knew Garth. Yeah. I knew you were going to put Garth. Yeah. I knew you were going to put it. <laughs> I mean, this is still Dana Carvey's best performance, right? Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm still sitting here being like, I hope they make Wayne's World 3 sometime. So I'm sure just, they can do it, I dude. Just, don't you think that those two that in like so late awesome. middle age would actually be kind of hilarious? With, like their kids, like rock on, <laughs> yes, yeah. Like, oh god, you know they would have a scene where their kids have like the same haircuts. Oh, you know it, and right, freaking but... Garth's son has like the glasses. Yeah, and everything but like I, that. I mean, Garth is actually adorable. The way that he's like afraid of the camera half the time. And like when he away talks, his mouth like barely speak. moves. Like, and there are these yeah. classic scenes where like there's a conversation happening, and then you see like the camera's actually following. Garth while he's doing something <laughs> really, really random, but you can still hear the actual conversation that's advancing the plot of the film taking place elsewhere. Uh, it's I don't know. He's, he's awesome. so lovable. Yeah, he's lovable, and he can wail on the drums. <laughs> Dude's awesome. Yep. Um, moving on to my number five sidekick. Uh, my number five sidekick. Um, I'm just gonna go right out there and say he has the coolest name out of all the five that I have, and it is Goose from Top Gun. Why is that cool? Goose Why do you guys cool love name? Goose so much? All males love this guy. Well, so I'm a male and I love Goose. <laughs> I don't get it. He rocks the awesome mustache. He has the one-liners. He's an can, awesome mustache. <laughs> he can wail on the piano. He's married to Meg Ryan in the film. Um, <laughs> And when he when he goes out, man, it, it it hurt. It hurt. I mean, why couldn't it be Maverick? Goose was much. Was way, he was a way. <laughs> Actually, I would like dude. the movie better. That way. I mean, Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise, okay, whatever. But Goose, man, Anthony Edwards, that that was his. I role. mean, I like. No offense to Anthony Edwards, I like Anthony Edwards, but I just. I just can I just can see Anthony Edwards like right now walking down the street and some person yells out goose and he's just like I know I will I kill know. you no <laughs> I don't I don't I don't get the Top Gun thing never have never will so. I mean I mean Top Gun you can debate about but goose goose is awesome <laughs> okay. you gotta love goose okay <laughs> uh, my number four is kind of a it's kind of a shout out to an old school kind of sidekick and to an actress specifically who played a lot of these characters so I picked. Birdie from All About Eve, played by oh. Thelma Ritter, and you could pick a few different kinds of characters that she played. Yeah. The other one that Mealy Pups to Mind is Rear from Window. Rear Window, yeah. yes. Um, where she's sort of somebody's maid and mm -hmm. inserts herself into the adventure that's going on more than one would think a maid actually would. <laughs> right. Always has these great sarcastic asides. Oh, she's so um, great. I mean, she was a beloved character actress and she kind of made this type of sidekick character her her trademark. Mm -hmm. uh, all About Eve happens to be one of my favorite movies of all time, so that's the one I picked. But basically, it's all just that Thelma Ritter aesthetic. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that she's, I, so, I love. she's so great. Like, like, like you said, she always has that kind of quippy one-liner, and uh -huh. she says things that people are thinking, but, oh, you shouldn't say stuff like that, yeah. and she's just like, whatever, <laughs> man, I'm gonna say it, and yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's actually a scene in All About Eve where Margo is kind of like, uh, can I ask you a question? Do you like Eve? And Birdie's like, do you want an answer or an argument? <laughs> just exactly. like, I want an answer. Exactly. No, I don't like her. Such an awesome you know, attitude, Just dude. the first person just in the awesome. film to be like, what's up with Eve? Yeah. So, uh, uh, All right. That's on. awesome. Um, for, my, for my number four, um, my number four sidekick I chose because this dude totally loves the main character. <laughs> A little more than that, what's appropriate, and it's Samwise Gamgee oh God. from this The Lord the of the I Rings. This is the one I knew you'd have. I mean, the, the funny thing about this is that Samwise Gamgee, he goes on this crazy adventure. He's step by step with Frodo, and he never wanted to go on this adventure. 
all he wanted to do was freaking work on the garden and help Mr. Frodo. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's by the end of the third film, he's freaking carrying Frodo like a freaking. By the end of the third and... film, you're like, you can just call him Frodo. You can stop with the I Mr. Know. Frodo. You, if anything, Frodo should be calling you Mr. <laughs> Samwise, dude. You know what I mean? And yeah. obviously, the the chemistry they two the two had and how much Samwise Gamgee loved his employer. It's like, all right, dude, we know exactly what's going on here. You might as well just l tell him how much you love him. And uh, I mean, Sean Astin, he he was great in that role. I mean, you have Rudy and Samwise Gamgee. I know. Gangy. I mean, those this are the two. This is another that thing that dudes love is Sean Astin. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm a dude. I love Sean Astin. <laughs> what are you gonna say? So. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> my number three is a cheat because I picked a duo of characters, but I think you really need the sort of interplay between the two of them to get the full effect. And that is Walter and Donnie in The Big Lebowski. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about putting Walter. I thought, sure. you know, I thought about just putting Walter because I think he really, like, serves the function of the sidekick in the film, sort mm -hmm. of inserting himself into the adventure of this madcap stuff that's going on. But so many... So many of those dialogue scenes hinge on Donnie's interjections. Oh, absolutely. And Walter's outbursts that I just had to I had to clump them together and put them both into oh, number three. I had to cheat. They're so awesome. Uh, there's that like I think that well known YouTube clip of every time uh, Walter's like, Shut the fuck up, Donnie and it goes for like two minutes. Poor Donnie. It's freaking awesome. Poor oh Donnie. poor Donnie. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, what happens to him in that movie? He totally did not deserve that, dude. No. But yeah, that's that's an awesome pick. I'm, I'm glad you put it in. Great film. All right, so my number three sidekick, um, I put mm, this sidekick because it was the only one that I found that that looked like me. <laughs> and it is Short Round from Indiana <laughs> Jones and the Temple of Doom. You gotta love Short Round, dude, even though the name is completely stupid and <laughs> the character... Okay, maybe it's a little stereotypical. I mean, this freaking Asian kid all of a sudden knows martial arts. <laughs> like, what the hell, you know? But You guys aren't born knowing martial arts? <sighs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's so cool seeing that one of my cinematic heroes, Indiana Jones, has a sidekick that is is Asian that that looked like me it connect I connected with it because it, I felt like I was him and I was going into that adventure I was going deep in that cave and going on those tracks and everything it it's just I mean for from my perspective it's an awesome thing to see something that I can relate to mm -hmm. so closely so. yeah I like that little actor too and the stuff he popped up in in the 80s He's oh yeah and I'm spacing on what his name is right now but it's good stuff yeah um you have it written down? Oh, yeah. It's uh, do, 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 Jonathan... You can't read your own writing. I can't read my own writing. Jonathan <laughs> K. Kwan. Oh, there it is. My bad. Anyway, <laughs> shout out. Where are you now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my number two from uh, a film and a company we talk about a lot. My favorite Pixar movie is Finding Nemo. Mm, so I had to put Dory, Dory on the yeah. list. You know, she's so funny. Just keeps Re um, just Really keeps brings a lot of heart mm -hmm. to that section of the film where Marlon's being all uh, freaking out. Um, mm -hmm. The personalities go together so well. And it is, once again, that classic sidekick trope where they just sort of end up being inserted on the hero's journey. Uh, and then get she gets a little bit of development of her own too. Kind of mm -hmm. finds a place where she fits in. in yeah, the big sea. it's 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 awesome, and it's it's my not, love for Finding Nemo knows no bounds. It's awesome how they take that character with a trait that could be kind of annoying. She keeps forgetting it all the time, but she totally wins us over. And oh, that could have so easily gone the other way if they yeah. had any balance issue with. And Ellen DeGeneres obviously does exactly. A job. And Mar Marlin's um, development would not have worked. If Dory wasn't a part of his journey. So. Yeah. Okay, moving on to my number two. Uh, my number two character is from a classic film. We're going to go to 1942 with Sam from Casablanca. Rick Blaine, right? You have this guy <laughs> who's going on this crazy self journey, and Sam. Is his buddy, you know, he he helps him out. He's there with him every step of the way. Um, he does not leave Rick at the freaking train station. He's there helping him out uh, <laughs> all the way up to when they go to Casablanca. And I mean, the thing about Sam is he provides the music for that film. And one of the classic elements of all the elements in that movie is the music. Mm -hmm. um, that scene where Elsa asks him to play that song again. And then he plays it that 
that great voice and oh it's just it's so great and that movie the magic of that movie would not have worked without sam it's good i wonder what sam did in his spare time i wonder what the adventures of sam would have been <laughs> i know he's like hmm where did everybody go <laughs> just gonna play my piano yeah oh rick blaine ran away okay <laughs> <laughs> that might be an interesting experiment for someone's one-man show or something. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to cheat again on my number one and do another duo. Mm. I'm a cheater today. And I had to include Ron and Hermione from the Harry uh, Potter yeah. films. Yeah. Uh, that story doesn't work if Harry Potter is just insufferable dude with no friends, you know? Like, yeah. Harry's pretty arrogant. He jumps to a lot of conclusions. <laughs> he He's he's a flawed character. I love him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he needs other people who have sort of the opposite flaws of him. Mm -hmm. And you've got lovable, loyal, hilarious Ron, and then intelligent, badass Hermione. Right. And the three of them... By the, I mean, in the books, it's even more pronounced than in the films how much they really couldn't get through this without each other. Um, so they're kind of like a, they're more like a trio, really. <clears throat> they are, but I mean, the very prophecy means that Harry, Harry has, has to, to be, be the, the yeah, one with the, the you know, the one to fight the final battle alone. But they, he never would have gotten there without these two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, classic stuff, and I'm uh, just a huge Harry Potter nerd, so I had to get it in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like when I was making this <laughs> list, uh, those two definitely uh, came up, but I, I wasn't sure which one to pick. So I was like, That's I hope why I'm cheating to today. <laughs> so, all right. Let's move on to my number one sidekick. Um, like many of the sidekicks that we put, the awesome thing about this is that um, sidekicks try to put characters on the right path. Mm -hmm. They they rein them in if they're going the wrong way, and that's exactly what Jiminy Cricket does <laughs> in Pinocchio. He doesn't You're do such it well. A sucker for this movie. <laughs> he doesn't do it well. I mean, freaking <laughs> Pinocchio gets into some really bad bad problems but he's a cricket i mean what else can yeah, he do? What's he gonna do and that's that's exactly that's exactly <laughs> how great his character was i mean he played his conscious right and what's your conscious It's that little thing in the back of your head that's telling you don't do that don't do that and that's exactly what jiminy cricket does and i mean it's such a classic character and that song he sings when you wish upon a star he really has a lovely deep singing voice <laughs> for a cricket, for a cricket. <laughs> When I think of Disney and Disney's main theme song, I hear Jiminy Cricket in my head. And I mean, how can you? I think hate it's on because they like only use the beginning of that in the logo. Version? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they knew. It's inside your they head. They knew. They knew. And freaking, I mean, how can you hate on that guy? I mean, he gets the he gets the gold star at the end of the movie. Nobody's He's just hating so on awesome. him. And I know you like his outfit too. Oh, I love his outfit. <laughs> I mean, if I can rock that top hat. <laughs> I'd be golden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been another top five here at MacGuffinBodcast.com. Tons of great sidekicks in the history of cinema. Let oh, us know which tons, ones you would yeah. have had on your top five. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. And uh, check out the other top fives we have at MacGuffinPodcast.com. We'll see you next time.